I'm from Maine originally, northern Maine. There's a thousand people in the town I grew up in. Which there's probably more than that, but we're like woods people, so nobody's ever rounded us up to count us all at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I think anybody, when you grow up in a small town, um, you know everybody. Like I don't just know the people in my age group, I know their grandparents, I know their dogs' names, and so there's never any kind of public fighting in the one grocery store, or the one church, or the one school. So when you move here, it's such an onslaught of the public displays of anger that you're like, oh my god, I don't know how to handle this, what's happening? Because you're still like making eye contact with every single person. Be like, how are you today? How can I help you? What's going on? I, there needs to be classes for people who move here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so, and when I first started uh, working nights, my roommate said to me, Leo, be careful in the subway late at night, because men expose themselves on the train. And I was like, you mean they share their hopes and dreams? <laughs> She's like, no, like they show you their dick. <laughs> Which I guess for a guy sort of is your hopes and dreams, but it's, it's very scary. And I was like, no. Way. No, that's not possible. Nobody does that. And then, sure enough, I'm on the end train in one of the like the little two seats in the back, and this little old man, I mean like 90 years old, comes and sits next to me and takes his junk out and rests it on my thighs. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. And I was so taken back. I was like, ew. And then I was like, oh. years old, I bet he fought in World War II. That's an important war. I support our troops. I can just hear my mother's voice in my head being like, let him rub it out on your leg, Leah. It's the good neighbor thing to do. So I did. Uh, I have health care. I'm very, very uh, excited about it. I've, I've found a plan here that allows self-employed people to buy in. And I'm really a uh, huge supporter of everybody having health care because I think of, I love this country and I think a part of being a great nation is taking care of all the people that live here. And it drives me crazy when politicians talk about how they have family values and like the, their moral majority. And they talk about Jesus in order to pull the Christian vote in and then don't support public health care. So you're like, oh, uh, I read the Bible. And Jesus healed sick people for free. <laughs> like that was basically his entire move, all through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's just handing out free health coverage to everybody. <laughs> he did that and a little light bartending. <laughs> if you want to convince me that it's Christian to support privatized big money for profit insurance companies, you would have to rewrite the Bible. You would have to have Jesus be like, oh. Lazarus, I would love to bring you back from the dead. But unfortunately, your plan is out of network, so. Oh, hey, sick guy, I really want to help you, but I was just notified leprosy is a pre-existing. <laughs> or like throw out these emotional words to hide the truth, Todd Aiken, you know what I mean? You're like, how did you, that's a fact? I didn't know that was a fact. Oh good, because then when I tell myself that the six slices of pizza I just had doesn't count because I'm PMSing, then that's also not a fact. You know, you just make stuff up. Like I recently did a benefit for Planned Parenthood. They flew me out to Michigan to help raise awareness because pharmacies were privatizing and they wouldn't give out women's birth control pills anymore. And the man who was in charge of these shenanigans released a statement saying, we believe birth control pills are miniature abortions and we're taking the moral high ground. Wow, you're taking a moral high ground on a fact that you just made up? That's amazing. 
And it's where does it end? Like it just keeps getting bigger. Where does it stop? What's next? Are they gonna outlaw pulling out? <laughs> Justin from Fox and Friends. A thousand babies died today on a young girl's stomach. It was a belly button holocaust. This just in. A million baby babies perished in a young boy's room. It was a Jim Zog genocide. about this. I actually, there's never been a divorce in my entire family, on my mother or my father's side, ever. And it's, they're very religious. And in the book of Matthew, it says, what God has joined together, let no man tear apart. So it's a huge deal, no divorces. We have a lot of murder in our family. <laughs> my cousin's like, no, he's still together, he's just missing right now. My favorite example is my aunt and uncle because they fought my whole life and he would always say things to her like, you don't clean, you don't know your way around the kitchen, you're a bad wife. Would not file for divorce. And then, two years ago, he shot himself in the kitchen. Yeah, the suicide note said, clean that up, bitch. <laughs> it was so funny if you guys were there. Like, was just... Thank you so much, I'm really loved.